Hi there, Jeff Coughlin, Scale Modelling Now. Well, isn't this a welcome release? Let me ask you a question. Did you buy this the first time round when it came out? If the answer is yes, well, lucky you, I didn't. And I regretted it ever since. And for whatever reason, I have no idea why, I never did get around to buying it. And I'm just so pleased that Revel have seen fit to release or re-release the kit, which I think dates back to around about 1998 or something like that. Um, but nonetheless, this is a good kit. It was always a good kit and you've only got to go to any model contest or model show around the country and you will see, um, I'm sure, at least one if not more of these models made up. I mean, for me, it's such an iconic type. I mean, the Junkers JU52, um, you, you, you know it, don't you? you know? um, where Eagles Dare, the opening sequence in the film where you've got that JU52 um, feigning its um, engine failure, whatever it is, and needs to make an emergency landing. Um, and what a great scheme that is. I mean, wouldn't that make a great choice to um, create a, an excellent scheme? That all, overall white with the, the green kind of um, wiggly lines sort of, sort of through it. Excellent. Loved it. Um, and that, for me, made me want to go and buy a, a model of, of, of the JU-52. At the time, I think originally when it came out, I wasn't too sure where I was going to put it because it was it was a bit big and we were pushed for, for space. And that's possibly why I didn't do it. But anyway, it's back again. So let's go and have a look at what we've got inside the box. So what you have are four big main sprues in this light gray uh, plastic. And immediately what strikes you, of course, is this um, uh, un almost well, un almost unique to Junkers, uh, th this cor corrugated metal effect. Uh, which you can see here on the wings and just about every part of the aircraft the fuselage you've got the control surfaces the massive um trading edge kind of sort of permanent flap type things that you've got going on there so really really um, um impressive um, molding you've got there interesting i can't really see any um uh, flash uh, on the model which is also great so let's have a look at it in more detail so here we go, we've got some beautiful little wheel hubs to kick off with, lovely tyres, got those nice tread patterns going on there. With a bit of careful cleaning up, those should look really good. Love the flat the fact that you've got some flats on those that will make the model sit more authentically. Again, you've got some lovely detail on the overwing uh, corrugated effect here, which uh, will look just terrific once it's all painted up. Go inside the cockpit. I mean, interesting enough, there's a bit of a greenhouse cockpit going on with the, or, or canopy, I should say, going on with the J52. So you will probably see more of the cockpit than you would do on some aircraft. And Revel have obviously picked this up because they've given you some really neat detail here, which I really like. Decent instrument panel, some other really nice cockpit detail, instrument boxes uh, and the like, which is great. And then you get a decent decal that you could whack straight over the top of that instrument panel, which will look perfectly good uh, for the model. Um, all sorts of other details like control yokes and steering wheels and so on here. So if we just move that sprue out of the way, bring in number two, what have we got here? When it, already, already you see a bit of a size of, of, of the model. So what have we got here? A model that's probably, I don't know, uh, probably about I don't know, 13 inches, maybe 14 inches long, something like that, and whatever the equivalent in centimeters is. Um, I've got reasonably small hands, but you get an idea here of the size just compared to, to my hand. Um, lovely engine detail, really like the way uh, Revel have tackled that. You've got the tri-motor set up, you know, nose um, prop and engine with one on each wing. And of course, you've got that unique kind of can canted out uh, design you've got to the engines as well, which is going to be interesting. But, you know, this is a good example here where if you look at the engine inserts here, just behind the prop blades. You know, there's no flash on these parts at all, and those openings could be a real pain to have to clean up, but you don't have any of that. It's all continued to mold really, really well. Really decent to get some uh, paratrooper uh, figures here for the aircraft. That's great, isn't it? To be able to display it perhaps on a base with, with those um, guys waiting to board. And then t flipping over, you've got some lovely internal detail that you can see here too. So really impressive bit of kit this uh, so far. Absolutely love it. So let's have a look at the remaining two sprues. Here on sprue three, we've got um, yeah some cracking uh, bulkhead detail. Just bring you in here so you can see that. 
that's lovely that's going to just paint up beautifully i'm not sure how much of it you'll see but nonetheless you'll see probably maybe just enough to make it worthwhile doing um, right the way through to the floor and the cockpit floor here and the main fuselage and interior floor and then you've got this separate lower section to the fuselage and well I, i've had no or seen no particular um issues with uh, the fit of that I've, i don't remember anybody uh, complaining about it so hopefully that will be perfectly reasonable which is good oh that's an interesting little thing there i just spotted uh, whether you saw that actually <laughs> revel molded on the date oh, it was 1998 so there you go 1998 date 1998 date well obviously you'll need to sand that off because it's raised detail so you want to get rid of that um but again you've got some molded on belts for the cockpit i don't know um you might want to remove those and add your own as separate items um but again, just peering through the glass, not sure that would be worth it, but uh, it's, uh, it's up to you. Maybe it would. And then the last main sprue, we've got the other uh, wing sections here, which uh, are looking really good. I think these are the underwing sections, by the way. And because, of course, the uh, undercarriage was fixed down, wasn't it, in this uh, tail, uh, tail dragger. Um, but again, moving on here to the tail pane, this corrugation is beautifully done, absolutely superb very fine and refined and that's probably why the models look so good and even on the wings you've got the two different um, types of corrugation here um, as you get further out to the end of the wing got some seating for the interior here um, which is fine if you want to add that and these long uh, trailing uh, wing lower sections here on uh, on the final part of the sprue so that's the kit itself uh, let's have a quick look at the decals while they're to hand. As you can see here, nicely moulded. Um, might well want to think about um, spraying some of these markings. Um, you can get masks, you might well be able to um, do that yourself uh, or, or, or find some uh, bespoke mar masking company who can produce them for you. On the other hand, um, with some really good use uh, of Microsol and Set or some other decal setting solution. Interesting, I noticed that UMP, Ultimate Modeling Products, have just released some decal setting solutions, sort of strong, medium, and normal, I think. Um, might be worth a look um, if you are looking for something a bit different to apply the decals onto, or on with, I should say. I know softening solutions are gonna be essential. One of them is to make sure that these conform to all that corrugation on the surface of the model. Again, rather than produce, this is again neat. They've given you um, the seat harnesses, uh, the belts, I should say, which are well printed, um, good colouring. And again, if you apply those to some masking tape um, or some foil or something, those will save you having to go out and buy some aftermarket extras if that's what you want or were thinking of doing. And then finally, we've got the, um, the clear sprue. Clear sprue looks really nice. Um, completely blemish free, lovely clear transparencies, so nothing to uh, get excited about there or indeed worried about, which is, is more to the point. Finally then, we have the instruction booklet, classic sort of, of Revel's current styling, um, nice colour picture of the finished model on the front, goes through the Revel paints or paint mixes that you would require if you're going to uh, build the model using theirs, uh, their products. And then you've got uh, the construction sequence, which I think seems pretty reasonable for this particular model. Sometimes you cut that is not always the case, but got good colour references in there. And I quite like the fact that they've indicated almost uh, an idea of the colour by uh, providing something similar to what the real colour would be like. Um, and then as you move on through the construction, you can see the interior really is quite detailed, uh, which is, is great to see. Particularly if you have that rear door open where you can peer inside and certainly see plenty of stuff going on uh, in terms of interior detailing and then you're onto those engines which I think are a real strength in the kit looking at the detail. Good steer if you want to paint the um, paratroopers, uh, they're included and then you've got really interesting scheme here I think. Um, you've got this one which is a J52 um, based in Libya, North Africa and that's always going to be an exciting scheme for me where you've got uh, the 65 undersurfaces with the white wingtips for the theatre markings, and then you've got that cracking um, colour scheme on top. I mean, I really think that's worth giving um, uh, a go-to, to be honest. Um, Got to be worth it, hasn't it? Pull that one off, that's going to look fabulous, isn't it? 
if you don't fancy that or you want your bottle or anything, no, 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 I want something more simple, then you've got the standard splinter scheme here for um, another aircraft based in Reggio in Italy in 42. So a couple of options there with the markings. So overall, I think that's a really nice bit of kit. Um, fabulous to see it back. If you didn't get it the first time or indeed with one of the other subsequent releases or re-releases, then I definitely would go out and get it now. I think the price looks very reasonable as well at the time of uh, this little review or little insight into the box contents at least. Um, I think it's a knocking out to around about 40 quid UK uh, GB pounds. So um, I'm sure you better get it at a decent price wherever you are. So good luck. Hope you like that little insight into the kit and uh, we'll definitely get on to build this one in due course in SMN as usual.